Hi, I'm Johnny Nomega, and we're in, of course, Nomega Recording Studios in the wonderful Richmond, Virginia. And I'm here today to give you a couple tips on mixing. Now, as a disclaimer, it's impossible for me to teach you how to mix in a short amount of time. It takes years of experience and a lot of schooling to be able to effectively mix. But I am going to take those of you that do mix, mix in the studio professionally or mix at home, give you a couple tips that will help you advance in your mixing. We're going to be working on the platform of Nuendo today, but the things that we learned today, you can use on any platform, whether it's Pro Tools, Cubase, Logic, Digital Performer, you name it. Now we're going to start with creating sub tracks. I've already set us up here as you can see. Now I've produced this track personally in reason for a wonderful singer named Carolyn Scrub. But you will notice that we have the MIDI alongside the audio. What I've done is I've taken the liberty to export all of the MIDI, put it into audio out of reason. Since it's new window, I have unlimited tracking, so I've done it all stereo. If it was something like Pro Tools and it wasn't an HD system, I'd have all of my low frequency sounds like kick drums and sub frequency basses and bass lines from bass guitars and mono. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit F2, bring up my transport, even though I have a project mix over here, we're in our uh, secondary mixing lab here. I'm gonna hit F3 and bring up the mixing screen. From there, I'm gonna scroll all the way over and I'm gonna click to hide all of the MIDI that I don't need. So if you notice, now it's just on audio. I'm going to hit F3 again. I'm going to come down here to the bottom of the screen. I'm going to right click. I'm going to get rid of this transport bar because I'm going to do it on the project mix. I'm going to right click and I'm going to create some additional group tracks. If you notice, I've already created. I've kind of gotten started. I've created one for the guitars, an overall track, hook, verse, and for master vocals, which I'm calling M vocals. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to label them. I'm going to create one for all of my percussions and my drums. I'm going to create a track for my melody and with the one I have up here that's called tracks or what we'll call it M tracks or master tracks I'm actually going to dump all of my drums and my melody into that track so let's go ahead and set that up I'm actually saving it also under a secondary name so I can go listen to the original then I can come back and listen to my mix piano is a melody so I'm going to drop it into my melody track I'm also dropping my bass line and my strings into the melody track or the melody group that I've made. Drums and hi-hats, of course, I'm gonna drop into my percussion or drum grouping, along with my drum roll. And I have transitional, which I'm going to drop into my melody grouping. Snare, I'm gonna drop into my drum grouping or percussion. Guitar, I have going to guitar. I have that guitar group routed to my M track, which I have a somewhat like a light L2 waves compression or a light um, polyphonic polymetric EQ on that grouping as well. I'm here going to route my melody to group 10, which I'm going to name, and my drums to group 10, which I'm going to name M tracks. I'm gonna name this grouping. I'm actually bypassed this. I've had it set up. And the guitar I'm gonna shoot to M tracks also. I had that one done from earlier, so I'm gonna scratch that out so you can see what I've done. Now let's listen to it the way it is now. Also, to give you a quick pointer, I'm mixing on a PC. I've mixed on Macs. For those that big PC Mac argument. Whatever makes you feel comfortable. I have a quad core PC that handles anything I throw at it, but I also like working on G5s. Just depends on what they have in the studio that you're using. One thing I do want you to take into consideration is multiple points of reference. Um, and what that, what that is, is using multiple points of reference, or NPR means that you don't just have your studio monitors, your Mackies, your Yamahas, your Rocky KRKs, but you also have some alternative point of reference. And today we're gonna to be using a PA system what you'll find in most studios, a PA system, as a second point of reference. I also have, you can't see here, under my studio desk here, my studio furniture, some uh, a normal house system or house radio system. Also have a subwoofer. Now you hear people say you, you don't need a subwoofer. You hear people say you do need a subwoofer. You walk into a lot of major studios, you have a subwoofer. You don't necessarily need to hear that low frequency thump all the time, but a lot of times when you initiate your subwoofer, like I can click back my sub, I can turn my subwoofer on and off 
and doing that, I can hear the frequencies between my monitors and the subwoofer, and that's huge. So I'm not necessarily listening to the subwoofer itself, but the frequencies that I'm not hearing between the subwoofer and using that as a point to open the frequencies of my monitors up to fill in that gap. That way when I pop my CD in, in a car or some other medium, it sounds full. So let's listen. For the sake of the video, I'm going to mute the vocals and we're going to come back to that in a minute. And I'm also going to go and isolate the kick drum. Now that kick drum sounds great as it is, but I'm going to add a filter just to take out frequencies. Now, you may not hear frequencies in your kick drum as in higher frequencies, but they are there a lot of times if the kick drum isn't pre-EQ. So one thing I like to do is just to add a Q filter on or some type of EQ to take out high frequencies that I may not hear until everything's blended together. Once you blend it all together, I'll notice that my mix sounds a lot cleaner. So let's do that. <laughs> 